In this video, I will talk about 5G Core and the three phases of 5G Core, starting with mobile broadband, fixed wireless access, the learning and challenges from this, the new 5GC capabilities, and finally, 5G Advanced. Stay tuned. So welcome. My name is Anders Dunström, working at Ericsson as a product manager for Packet Core Controller, a key part of the 5G core, and I'll be working with this in day one with its standardization and now brought it into live operation. I have a long history in Packet Core. I worked on 3G, CDMA, LTPC, virtual EPC. And what I'm going to talk about today is basically the largest change we have seen in core networks over 20 years. What we're seeing happening today in phase one is basically getting mobile broadband and fixed wireless access in larger scale and launch networks. This will set the foundation to bring in the new capabilities for further evolution into 5G advanced. But why are we doing this? I mean, we're all doing this because uh, uh, mobile broadband is the foundation, but we also need to find new monetization waves within the industry. And with the second phase, we're seeing additional use cases will start to opening up on the market. This comes from low latency services, network slicing, providing mission critical services, providing private 5G solutions. All of this then enabling additional revenue on top of mobile broadband. So how have we been doing this in Ericsson and what have we launched and where are we on the market? Uh, we've now launched the cloud native core software with true dual mode functionality, support for both LTE as well as for standalone. We believe we are ahead of our competitors when it comes to the full cloud nativeness, the leveraging usage of open software, the deployment on flexible platforms, but also of our Western Europe and US competitors in terms of SA maturity. We are now live with 18 standalone networks as of February 23 and 19 EPC networks. Some of them also using the dual mode capability with both standalone and EPC in live operation. We have taken the journey of getting mobile broadband and fixed wireless access really hard, and this has taken quite a lot of effort. We, we started to launch the network and tune to, just to get the EPS fallback, to get the full functionality to, to work seamlessly with good quality, because good quality is the foundation for it. Further, we worked on GI land consolidation. What was previously two or three different boxes or virtual machines deployed in series doing NAT, firewall, TCP optimization. We have now leveraged the container technology and merged all of that into our packet core gateway, meaning we can do all of that within a single instance, a single Kubernetes orchestrated cloud native gateway. And to support this from an operational point of view, we're le heavily leveraging Helm and other technologies to create the software pipelines uh, really changing the game for how to automate core networks. If you go to phase two, we are in this phase now. It's not widely live deployed. It's starting to get deployed out in networks in trials and pox all around the world. So this is then really about how to enable the new capabilities to expand and get be able to address the new opportunities with the core. Uh, some of those are around critical IoT with ultra low latency, truly end to end, leverage a new cost framework as part of 5GC. L4S, QS for rate adaptation, really predictable low latency services. Geo, geo redundancy, built in software probes, a lot of functionalities needed then to be able to monetize and automate and provide the analytics within the network. If I further on move into 5G advanced, uh, this is really where we see progress will happen in the AI area. We have already from now, day one, introduced embedded NVWDAP as well as external functionality for it, providing initial use cases for embedded machine learning. We're envisioning a lot more use cases, analytics IDs will get added into the standards, providing next level of automation and inside the networks. So equally on XR, really getting a new type of end user experience with immersive XR type of services over the network. Yeah. One important aspect of a release uh, 18 then is red cap. Uh, this is then reduced capabilities. This is to provide lower cost devices with better 
better life. Uh, who, who can resist that? Deterministic networking for IoT, as well as non-public networks. What I've been talking about here is the future of mobile core networks. Uh, with this, you need to take this journey. You can start with EPC, you can start with 5DC. We have operators doing both of these two models. Uh, and we also believe you need to introduce way one or phase one. Get a solid foundation of mobile broadband. This is really for you to unleash the new capabilities as part of phase two coming with 5G standalone. So where are you on this journey? We can help to bring you forward. Thank you.